Hey guys, very happy to be here with you today. Um, so first of all, I want to know uh, where are you guys from? Um, I know like a few people here like Claudius, uh, Jean-Pierre, hey buddy. Sorry I woke you up. <laughs> Tom is here. Tulis, he was the first one on the chat. That's pretty cool. Uh, so let's wait a few minutes before we start this live stream. Just want to make sure people um, have the time to join. So by the meantime, just uh, write down where are you from. So we have Bax, Backspin66 from Sweden. I've never been to Sweden, but I would love to visit someday. Um, looks pretty, pretty nice. I've been to Finland briefly on my way when I was uh, traveling. That was like 15 years ago. No, more than that. Back in 99, I, I was going on tour in Latvia and we, we did a pit stop in Finland, but never went to Sweden. Um, Joe from California. Darren is in the UK and... Um, Wondering, does your wife go under suffering or she's a big music tech fan? She's not a big music tech fan, but she's a music fan. So uh, I'm pretty lucky. So she loves music and uh, so she kind of like the, the, the job I do. So I'm very blessed. Um, so uh, I'm going to answer your questions after this quick um nam recap i was at summer nam two weeks ago um, i actually drove down from montreal to nashville which was quite a long drive but you know we don't mind much because we do it maybe at least once a year we go down south with the kids and uh, so me and my wife decided just to instead of flying decided to drive down to uh, to nashville um, and we had a chance to stop in cleveland and we um, visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which was freaking awesome, okay? Um, it was better than expected, to be honest with you. It took us like five and a half hours to visit the entire thing. So if you, by any chance, pass by Cleveland, do a pit stop, visit that amazing museum. Um, it is very, very cool. It has to do with rock history, pop and rock history, actually, you know? So you go through, uh, through the 60s, the 50s, you know, 70s, 80s, and so on it's like a very very well done and nice museum um so that was our first stop at um for for that summer nam week um then we ended up in nashville we stayed at um, my good friend lidge shaw's place uh, and funny thing lidge um you know he was looking forward to uh um to, to come with us at nam and to be part of uh, a bit like we did last year, you know, we were a bunch of audio content creator um, meeting up at the religious place and we just had a very good time at uh, Summer Nam 2017 and he was looking forward to do the same this year, but he booked himself his vacation time at the end of June and this year for I don't know what reason, Nam was scheduled for the end of June instead of mid-July like it was a year ago. So it was too late for him to reschedule his vacation, but we ended up staying at his home for the entire week. So that was, in a way, pretty cool. But we had a chance to hang out with, with Lidge for a few days before he left for vacation. So Nam was actually great, okay? Um, it's always good to be at Summer Nam. Summer Nam in Nashville is way different than the one in Anaheim. Uh, I was at Winter Nam for the first time last January, and it was, it was like, pretty amazing because... Winter Nam is like that huge event, you know, it's, man, it's so, like, like Trump would say, it's tremendously big. <laughs> so it's like, man, only Yamaha as, you know, they have their own building, you know, so it gives you an idea. But Summer Nam is like way, way smaller, but it's in Nashville. So you get to hang out with, you know, with all the industry people, you know, they're all hanging out at, uh, at Nam, and you get to visit some cool places, going to see some gigs, um, getting to studios, and, you know, stuff it, that is a bit hard, harder to do in Anaheim. So that's what I like about Summer Nam, just the, uh, the community part of it. So we had a good time. We had a good time. It was, um, I would say, Nam itself was nice. Um, you know, I um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
post a video later on this week about that company that um, uh, what they do is they, they produce like like 1176s type of compressors and uh, LA2A type of uh, compressors as well. And they're called, oh, I forgot the name. Um, it's not warm. Warm audio was there as well. Uh, but th that company is from Chile. Uh, give me a second. I have to check what the name of that company is. Oh, there you go. Stam. Yeah. So that is uh, Stam uh, Audio, which is it looks like a freaking good company, honestly. You know, they have like... Um, 1073s preamp emulation, uh, 1176, uh, LA2A, uh, some stereo um, bus compressors, and uh, Paul Tech type of EQ emulations. Very, very cool, you know. Um, so, Stam Audio, um, I'm going to have a quick video posted later on this week. I just did a quick interview with uh, one of the guys at uh, Stam Audio. And uh, I'm looking forward to try one of their units um, in, you know, maybe in, uh, in the next few months. So we'll see. So that was one of my highlights at uh, NAM, uh, meeting with these guys. Uh, it was actually their first time in that type of convention. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, now, after, after that point, we, uh, we had a chance to visit some cool studios. But first, I'm just going to take the time to answer a few questions here, okay? I don't want to bore you with uh, with my NAM stories too much. Um, so we have Andrew here from England. And by the way, guys, um, is the audio good? Because the first time I did the chat, um, the live stream, I ended up using the webcam's microphone by mistake. So the audio sucked big time. Now this time, um, this time the audio is supposed to be way better. So let me know if it's good. Uh, now, what else do we have here? All right. Uh, Tom is asking, Chris uh, made this on my group. It's here on. The, okay. No, that's not. Uh, cool. Cool, Tom. That's pretty nice. Uh, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. How are you, man? Hope you're doing good, bro. Uh, I worked with Daniel on, on, on mastering one of his, uh, one of his album. Uh, which is a very good instrumental album. Uh, he is from the Montreal area in De Montagne. And oh yeah, you went on your trip to uh, to Denmark and uh, Norway. That's pretty cool. So I hope that trip was good. I hope you had a good time. All right. So uh, yes, and mixing stem audio. Perfect. Now uh, what else do we have? Okay, the audio, Claudius, sounds good. Perfect. Excellent. Cool. So I'm just going to get back to my NAM story. Um, we had the chance to visit a very cool, like two very cool studios. And one of them was um, Addiction Sound Studio. That was our on our first night before actually the first NAM day started. Uh, we were invited with, uh, actually Lid Shaw was invited. So we just uh, came on with him, which was pretty. Was, was we were pretty lucky actually to uh, to had a chance to go to that studio. So let me show you a few vid. Okay, I have like a few videos here. That's not the one. Let me check here. That's another studio. That was pretty cool. All right, Bluebird Cafe, pretty nice too. Okay, so that's the Addiction Sound Studio. That was like an awesome studio, I'm telling you. It's in Berry Hill, which is a um, um, it's a neighborhood in, uh, in in the southern part of uh, Nashville, which has all of these studios. So we had a good time at that place and uh, actually had a chance to, to meet French Canadians, which was quite, um, quite interesting. You know, they have their own studio in, uh, in Berry Hill and um, they play with a band called uh, Emerson Drive. It's a country act 
and uh, they've been playing around for at least eight, 15 to 18 years. They, they're actually on tour right now. Uh, so we had a very good time. We uh, we hooked up with them, and um, that was pretty, pretty cool. So this is the Addi Addiction Sound Studio. That was a great console. Um, so yeah, pretty impressive. So that was pretty, pretty cool. And um, now, what console? You know what? I posted that on my Instagram account. Let me go check, all right? Um, I forgot. Like... But let me check right away. It's, yeah, Trident TSM console, which has a lot of history, actually. So it is a, an impressive console, I have to say. Uh, so what else do we have here? Doo -doo. Yes, I did. I did hang out with Warren at Nam. That was pretty cool. We uh, uh, we saw each other directly at Nam, and afterwards at um, uh, at Vintage Sound, Vintage Sound in Nashville. Uh, Warren was hosting an event um, with some mixers and producers, uh, which was pretty cool. But the thing is, it was outside, and it was like so hot, so hot. It was like. I don't know, uh, 105, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which uh, w plus the humidity, because in Nashville it's pretty humid. So um, that was the weather all week. And uh, when we got back here in Montreal, it was the same here. So we, we once in a while get these heat waves coming on, and um, that was happening when we got back in Montreal. So uh, we got a taste of summer this year, which is always cool. Uh, now, what else do we have? Chris, do you know how to record uh, on four channels simultaneously? I have a UMC 44 HD, a bearing her USB interface. I actually don't know this uh, this interface, though, with four inputs. Now is the setting in Cubase 9.5, so I can record with four mics. Uh, you just simply need to allocate or create buses okay uh, if you click on f4 okay on your computer keyboard you're going to get to the vst connection audio or audio connection in 9.5 and uh, you're going to assign you're going to actually create four mono uh, buses okay and you're going to make sure these buses are allocated to your four channels on your interface okay so you're going to get uh, you're going to select um, mono in one mono in two mono in three and four and these are going to be, after this part is done, when you're going to create an audio track, you click on input and you're going to see all those four uh, inputs available. So just create four tracks and for the uh, first track, select to just uh, assign it to uh, input number one, you know, same for two to input number two and so on. And you'll be able to record four channels at the same time. So I hope that answers your question. All right. So... What else do I have here? Okay, cool. I didn't know that, Tom. Um, Tom is saying that is. It's a cool one. I think he's referring to the Behringer um, interface. And every channel has inserts. Nice. That's pretty cool. So, all right, Backspin. I hope that helps. Um, so, now... I don't know if you guys heard of the, of the Blackbird Cafe in Nashville. It's a well-known cafe where a lot of famous artists actually play that. It's very tiny. Um, and if, you fam if you're familiar with the show Nashville, uh, I think it was on CBS or something, um, they did uh, like a lot of footage in that, uh, in that cafe. You know? So the, the Bluebird Cafe is kind of part of the Nashville TV show. So it got very, very popular. So it is very hard to get in. Uh, so you most of the time you need to uh, to stay outside in line to make sure you have uh, you get a good spot. Uh, but we were lucky enough just because of a good friend that we met through Lidge. Um, his name is Russell Wolf, amazing fellow, and uh, he's he actually lived in Nashville for almost ten years. So I think nine years or so, and now he is in California. But he came for Nam, and we first met in Anaheim last winter briefly. So we uh, we actually had a chance to know each other better this time, and he brought us to the Blackbird Cafe on a private. 
uh, event with um, uh, with like songwriters and stuff like that that were just performing in the center of the uh, the cafe itself. And so we got in for free <laughs> with free food and free booze. <laughs> so it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, so that was one of my highlights of my trip to Nashville, just being at that uh, legendary place, the Bluebird Cafe, was quite amazing. Um, so let me show you. I think I have some vids. There you go. So that is the Bluebird Cafe. And it's, again, very tiny place. Uh, but very cozy, you know, and it's funny because people there was they were like very very attentive to what was going on So that's okay. That's the studio <laughs> Let me get back to the bluebird cafe There you go. Um, yeah, so Every time an artist was playing it was so quiet uh, In the cafe it was unbelievable like people weren't even chatting, you know I was at some point eating chips and I was like, okay I'm gonna have to wait until the song is over to to eat my chips because I would add the feeling I was too loud. So it gives you an idea. So it was a very, very cool place to uh, to listen to some good music. Uh, Bluebird Cafe, so so if you happen to go by Nashville someday, try to stop by. You're not gonna regret this. All right, so let's go and answer a few questions here. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, give me a second. I'm just going to read a few of your questions. Um, Andrew, any chance of a tour of your studio? Um, if you check on my... I did one last year, a year ago. I did a, um, a video on my studio, so you can check it out. I think I posted that in April or May 2017. So check out the, the list of my videos on YouTube and um, just go back a year. You're going to find a studio tour video. Um, then, that would be cool. Warren once did uh, with... Oh, yeah, I remember when Warren did that, the show us your studio. That was pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, check check out that um, that video I posted a year ago. You'll have a good idea of my setup. Um, I show you my control room, and I have like two recording rooms. One that is 19 feet by 12 or 14, something like that. Yeah, 19 by 14, but it has like angles and everything, so it's hard to uh, to get the specific. Um, uh, dimension of the room uh, and same for my booth my vocal booth is way um, is way smaller okay this is the room that is in front of me right now and I had that uh, window in front of me uh, which is at the back of the camera uh, and my recording my recording room my uh, boot my um, uh, control room this is where I spend most of my life and most of my time and uh, it is a pretty nice room I kind of like it you know so uh, very well treated and uh, the soundproofing here is pretty cool because my studio is in the basement of my home Okay, so um, I work from home and we built that house in 06 in 2006 and We built it from scratch. Okay, so I had the plans made by an, acoust an acoustician um, who helped me out with uh, the design of the studio and I, I hired some workers to, to build up the studio back then. But when I moved in, when I first moved in, the basement wasn't finished yet. Okay, so it was at first when we got in, the clearance okay, was at 11 feet. For a basement, that's pretty high. Okay, usually it's about, it's around eight feet here in, in Canada. So I don't know about the US, but it's probably the same. Um, so we, uh, we ended up having a, um, uh, more clearance on the the height of the basement was which was useful for me to uh, to to build up the studio. So in the end, you know, with everything built up, we uh, I ended up with nine point three feet as far as the clearance goes, uh, which is the height of my rooms. Um, so the the concept is very simple: is building a uh, a box within the box okay so there uh, all three rooms that i have they don't touch each other physically okay so there's always a space of air in between which sounds proof big time okay so this is the best soundproofing technique is to add some air basically 
Um, you know, I have two daughters, and back in 06, they were young kids running around, jumping around, and I didn't want my, um, I didn't want them to, um, to, to, to be uh, a problem, I would say. I don't like to say that word with kids, but you know what I mean, you know, working with clients and having the kids jumping around upstairs, you don't want to have these, uh, these noises going on when you're working with a client. So that's why we built it up a studio from scratch and uh, we made sure the, uh, the, the soundproofing was top notch. Uh, so check that video, uh, you'll get an idea of the studio itself. Um, let me check. You know what? Let's go back to Summer Nam. I went and visit another studio, which was way different than Addiction Sound. Uh, this one was in um, Nashville, more, not in Berry Hill, but in Nashville near downtown, which is, uh, it's called, let me check here. It is called the Tracking Room, which is one of the biggest studio in Nashville. There you go. Um, man, that is an amazing studio, let me tell you. Okay. Let me show you the control room if I can. Okay, that is a freaking nice room. Okay, that room is made of rocks. <laughs> okay, which um, like it has that natural reverb that is very, very cool and it looks freaking nice uh now we have that uh, ssl was that the uh that is no that's that uh, no that's not the ssl it's not at the same studio let's go back to the tracking room bear with me a second there you go okay uh now we have that super large room they were actually recording a band when i was there with um they worked with roswell pro audio let me go back to, I'm just going to have to let me check here. There you go. So that is the SSL 80 channel console at the tracking room, which was pretty, pretty impressive. I think I have a pic here of the studio. Let me check. No, I don't. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the videos. I should have just worked that out better than this sorry guys it was a bit of a last minute call here yeah the band was playing as you see here um type of a jazzy folk uh type of band that was pretty cool and they were testing some microphones and roswell was there with their microphones you know so uh, they they recorded the drums with the mini k47s the kick drum was the delphos and they tried the new uh, Roswell microphone, the Colares, I think its name, uh, on the vocals, which was pretty great. And that studio was like, it was impressive. Everybody playing at the same time in that main room and um, the singer was in one of the booths. So it was pretty, pretty nice. Uh, so that was kind of a highlight too, just to, to, to be there and uh, assisting a recording session in that huge studio it's always fun um now let's uh, if you guys if you guys have any questions feel free to leave them in the chat and again uh, thanks again to be here just uh, if you can like and uh, share you know the feed so people can join i don't even know how many we are right now okay we are we have 16 watching right now which is pretty cool so thank you again for watching this stream um Okay, uh, Tom is asking, any way to prevent Cubase 9.5 from deleting all unused track pictures? Good question. I don't work with track pictures, okay? To be honest with you, um, I did try it once or twice, but it's not something I, I just reach for, okay? So I don't think I'm gonna be able to help you on this one since I don't use it much. Uh, so I didn't even know Cubase deleted all these unused track pictures. Interesting. I'm going to have to check it out, though. Uh, let me check here. Anybody is, um, of you guys are going to watch the uh, uh, the game at 2 p.m.? The uh, England and Croatia uh, football game or soccer game, as we say here in America. 
Uh, th that stream was supposed to be on at 2 p.m., but I forgot about the semifinals, the World Cup semifinals. So I decided just to bring that back to 1 p.m. instead. So let me know if you guys are into the World Cup. Um, France played Belgium yesterday, and uh, I was we watched the end of the game because I was uh, in a shooting video session yesterday with a French girl. It was so funny. She, you know, when we watched the end of the game after our uh, video session, she was so into it. It was just so funny. Um, okay. All right, Tulis is go England. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys from England are going to cheer for your team. I hope so. I'm actually cheering for England. Funny thing, eh? But yeah, I am. So guys, um, again, if you have any questions, please leave your questions in the chat uh, so I can try to help you out with anything you want. It can even be off topic if you want. If you want to talk about something else than audio, feel free to do so. Um, now, um, next weekend is going to be interesting. I'm having a band here in the studio on Saturday. We're going to record some drums and maybe vocals if uh, we have time. Um, so I have to set up my studio for that band. And the following day, I'm going, I'm going to be on site at a church recording a full band. Um, Sunday and Monday, full day Monday. So we're doing the setup on on the Saturday and we're uh, recording on Monday. So we'll set up, sound check, everything is going to be done Sunday. A full band, live recording, and we're going to do the overdubs here in the studio in the following weeks. Now this is for an artist called uh, Sandra Kouemé. She's a French uh, worship artist um, actually I did an acoustic uh, tutorial of some sort not too long ago and um, it was she was part of the video anyway so you can look back a few weeks and you'll end up on that video so we're going to record her album it's going to be a full band recording drums two electric guitars going to be an acoustic uh, piano keyboards uh, only one vocal for the recording we're going to do some background vocals um, and overdubs which is going to be cool um, oh, Warren is here. <laughs> hey, buddy, man. I'm doing good, man. Happy you, uh, you joined the chat. Cool. And by the way, guys, um, check out Produce Like a Pro. Warren does a lot of live chats, okay, live streams every single week, okay? So uh, he does at least a live stream twice a week, and it is uh, very, very cool to watch. Um, you know, when I have a chance, I always... Um, connect to a stream and if I can't live I do it afterwards I thanks so you rock too Warren it was good to see you at NAM by the way that was pretty cool um, so what else do we have here uh, Tom is saying uh, I think I stay a while at Chris uh, hard to serve two masters <laughs> that's funny uh, I don't pretend myself to be a master, trust me. Uh, have you heard of Sterling Mics? And if so, what do you think of their new ST169 tube mic? Actually, I didn't, okay? I'm gonna check them out though. Sterling Mics, so I never tried any of those. And um, if some of you have though, you know, just, uh, Write down in the comment section if uh, they're any good. And uh, there you go. Yeah, Nam was so, so cool. I, I, I know that Warren had a good time. Um, you were on fire talking to all those people, Warren. That was so cool. Uh, Warren's a great guy, man. He, at these kind of events, like, he's all over the place. Uh, I remember I first saw him at Nam. And I thought, okay, I need, I, I told my wife, okay, I need to, uh, to catch up with, with Warren. The, you know, I just went to talk with someone, turn around, like Warren was gone. Already somewhere else talking to people, <laughs> like the guy's on fire. I love it. So, all right, I'm going to go in a few minutes. So if you guys want to ask me some questions or comment on anything, please let me know. 
And um, I'm going to actually keep you posted on the recording I'm going to be working on this weekend. Um, it is going to be quite interesting. Uh, recording a live band is always a challenge. Um, and the fact that I'm not going to be recording in a studio, it's going to be on the stage of a church. But it's a modern type of church, okay? So it's not these big uh, type of Catholic halls, okay? Cathedral and stuff. It's more a, a modern type of, uh, of church. Um, I did a recording there two years ago. It went pretty well. So I kind of know that church. I actually, I actually do some FOH and monitors at that church, um, like three, four times a month. So I know the place. Uh, so it's probably, um, it is going to be a very good experience. Again, I love doing live recordings. And, um, you know, the challenge is always fun. And the end result usually is pretty cool. It, it's something to, to work in overdubs, but to have at least the bass tracks recorded live is, um, is cool. You end up with some, some, sometimes you just end up with some magic going on. Uh, within the musicians and you know it which often you know ends up with very very good results so i'm looking forward to i'm going to try to document a few a few things at the, that recording and maybe share that with you guys on a video or so of some sort um, then i'm going to be recording in pro tools okay i know i'm, I'm usually work in cubase but the church is already set up with a studio with pro tools so it's going to be easier to just record everything in Pro Tools. And we're going to use the um, uh, the board, the digital board they have. And uh, that's simple. And everything else is going to be done here in Cubase at the studio, overdubs, uh, all the editing and stuff. I'm just going to take all of the tracks, transfer everything in Cubase to continue the recording and the mix. Uh, which of your favorite Cubase stock plugins? Oh boy, um, frequency is pretty cool. Um, it's a very good addition to. I think it's it was added in version nine, I believe, um, which makes me think a bit of the Fab Filter Pro Q. Um, I'm a big user of the Pro Q. I love the Pro Q too, but uh, frequency is quite nice though. If I if I need just to, to use a quick uh, EQ. Um, uh, yeah, it's, um, I, I reach out to, to frequency if I need to use a Cubase plugin. Um, there's the uh, multi-band, um, distortion saturation plugin. Oh, just forgot the name, but man, it is a very, very cool plugin. I don't have Cubase open in front of me right now, but hit me on if you remember what the name of that plugin is. Um, it is a multi-band saturation plugin, so this is, I kind of use it a lot, okay? So this is one of my uh, favorite plugins. Um, yeah, Claudius agrees with me. Frequency is quite nice. Cool. Um, Warren's, <laughs> I'm not the, Chris is the man. I'm not a master, Chris is the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that to you, Warren. You're the man, dude. I'm sorry, but you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah quadrafaz i'm yeah exactly claudius thank you my friend quadrafaz is one of my favorite um stock plugin out of cubase which is pretty cool um check it out if you don't use it it is very cool you can just saturate like separate bands of frequencies which is uh, pretty nice uh, what about you guys? Are all of uh, are most of you on Cubase or any of you on Studio One, Pro Tools, or any other DAW? Please, if you can, name your DAW. You know the one you work with um, at the moment, or if you work with more than one, let me know in the chat. Uh, you are the Cubase guy. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been working with Cubase for since I started music production, so that was 15 years ago. Uh, I studied on Pro Tools and Digital Performer, but I back then, you know, back then it was very easy to crack um, softwares. I don't know about now because I don't crack anymore. I just buy everything. But uh, back then, I just cracked myself, like most of us, just cracked at, at a cracked copy of Cubase, um, which we you know it was okay. It was you know it was 
studying. I didn't have any money. And, uh, but the minute I just started my business, I just, I just bought a license. That was the version that the, the AWI was working a lot um, since I had a cracked version. So the minute I had a chance to buy a DAW, I just went and buy Cubase. Um, is there a way to group notes like to lock them together? Uh, Nikolai, I know that way. I'm asking if there's a way to group. Uh, I think I missed something of that question. Did you ask that a question before in the chat? I probably missed that one out. Question is above. Let me check. Nikolai, I missed that one. Is it possible to group notes in in key editor? Good question. Uh, I never had to do it, so I won't be able to answer that question. I'm going to have to look it up, though. Um, I do a bit of MIDI in um, in Cubase, but I, I do a lot of uh, acoustic recording most of the time. Uh, so, but I'm going to look it up because the one of the projects I'm going to be working on in the near future is going to require me to work a lot using MIDI instruments. But uh, even when I did, though, I never had to group any notes. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Uh, let me know. So, Claudia started on Atari 1040 stereo. Wow, man. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to ask you how old you are. Uh, Tom has is, is been using Cubase for two years, starting with version 8. That's cool. That was a good version to start with. I started with version 2, but I remember the first, uh, when I, before I was, uh, before I got to study into music production, I used to play in a band, and one of the band members had a studio, and this is where we uh, recorded our demos. And he was working on Cubase VST back in the days. So that was my first introduction to Cubase. That was back in 98. Imagine. All right, so one, two, two. So Tom, 56, is that your age? <laughs> Claudius says, says, better not. <laughs> That's good, I respect that. Um, starting with Reaper, that's Joe. He started with Reaper, but got a copy of Cubase 6 and now on 9.5 Pro. Yeah, the big, you know, the major shift with, uh, with Cubase was from version 6 to 7. I remember when they first came out with version 7 with that brand new console. Um, that was a very, very, it was a huge improvement. And um, I, th I think at that point, Cubase started to, it was a good DAW before, but it at, you know, at that point, it just went a step above. And, uh, yeah, I know that there are some other DAWs out there that are very, very good. I think of Studio One. That seems to be pretty cool. Um, you know, I did a lot of stuff on Pro Tools. I did a lot of mixing on Pro Tools. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the editing in Pro Tools just because I'm, I'm not used to it, that's it. But I know that people that do edit in Pro Tools are like, they, they just can't go without it. Uh, so I, I guess once you're used to it, I, I think w once you're used to any DAW uh, and you know it pretty well, uh, you just cannot go without it, so. Um, there you go, guys. So uh, I think I'm gonna go in about a minute or so. Uh, the game is gonna start soon. Um, so if you guys are into the World Cup, the game is going to start in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to cheer up for England on this one. Um, Moonshare. Uh, no, Moonhair Studio Darken Jax. Cool name, man. Are you pleased with the success of the channel and what uh, were your expectations when you started it? Uh, I didn't have any expectations, to be honest with you. I just started to post some videos on YouTube two and a half years ago. Um, it was in the I was thinking November 2015, I think, when I, where I posted my first Cubase video. Um, I did a French and English channel, so at first 
everything was on the same channel. And then I just created myself a French version of the channel. Uh, I did that for a year afterwards was too much work. So I just did everything in English. And but most of the French people were following me in English anyway. So uh, for now, that is still the case. I just wanted to upload more often, uh, which I wasn't able to do uh, working on two separate channels. Uh, but I didn't add any expectations. I just, you know, um, went on, posted some videos, you know, hopefully helping some people out. And uh, it just started to, to grow. And, um, you know, I it's a bit hard for me to post more than once a week, you know, considering all the work I have with the business. Um, but the best would be for, if I want the channel to grow, uh, faster, I would say, uh, it would be to post more than once a week. Uh, maybe that's going to happen in the near in the future. We'll see. Uh, but for now, this is what I can offer. Uh, but I really enjoy doing so. I love uh, YouTube. I love posting videos. I love helping people out, um, getting in touch with you guys. And I did, you know, um, uh, ended up with good relationships out of this adventure. Uh, only just meeting guys like Warren, you know, at events like uh, NAM and AES and all these type of events is, I think that that is one of the highlights of that YouTube adventure, just to, to meet other creators uh, in the same niche. Um, you know, we're all having the same goal is to help people out with their music. You know, the music industry has changed a lot. Um, People used to, uh, they still do, but they used to go and showcase in front of uh, record labels and get signed and release music. But now you don't need labels. You don't need to showcase yourself in front of uh, executives and stuff like that. It still happens, but it's not um, a must. Okay, You can easily produce your own music by yourself and release it on Spotify if you want. And that's why I started that, um, that YouTube channel to help people out. So... Um, I think we're in a very good age for music production. Just the fact that um, everything is more accessible. You know, gear is more accessible. Um, everyone can produce um, music easily without investing a lot in gear. You can do everything with only one interface in a computer in a good DAW. You can go like, you can do a lot with only a minimum uh, sets of tools, okay? Um, I, I would say it doesn't matter which equipment you use, okay? Equipment, at some point, yes, it will affect the quality of the sound, but that doesn't mean that the song you're going to be re recording is going to be a bad song because I, I think, I believe the, um, the most important thing in music production is the, the first part of the production itself, which is the songwriting which is the composition of the song, which is um, writing a good song. Make sure that the initial art that has been created is good, okay? Um, that for me is very, very important. To, to get very good at uh, producing good music is to, to write good music to start with. Uh, then we go into the recording stage. Uh, the arrangement. Arrangements is another very, very cool part. But once you have a good song, it is easier to arrange a good song to start with and then the rest goes but you can record a good song on a pc a mac using only one uh, small tiny interface that's all you need to start with that's all you need to to produce music and that's is that is the beauty of today's reality for musicians um, it is the accessibility of um of all this equipment um it's easier for it's easier for musicians right now in 2018 to produce good music than it was 10 and 20 years ago. Okay, uh, so we are very blessed to uh, to have access to all of these, yeah, these non-expensive equipment. So it's always my, my my start point. You know, when we're talking about gear and stuff, I always go back to I try to go back to the craft of the art to start with, and then once. This is done once you have a good song, you have like good music going on. Um, now we can talk about recording and now there's some different types of recording quality, some different equipment you can use if you want to increase the quality of your recording. But using a minimum of equipment is not going to stop you 
on recording your music and release your music. So there you go. So that's my take on that. And that I think I, that, that started with the question of expectation when I started my YouTube channel. Wow, I can talk. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. So I guess that answers your question. <laughs> uh, let me see if we have something else. Um, uh, thanks for your generosity of your information. You're welcome, Joe. I'm more than happy to share that with you. Um, just a quick question before I leave. Are all of you guys producing your own music or does some of you produce music for uh, clients? I'm just curious. Just let me know in the chat. Uh, Joe is asking, are you back next week? Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to start to do this once a week. Um, since I'm not able to produce more than one video per week, maybe I can produce one regular video and maybe do one live uh, live stream. I don't know for what the, uh, if you guys are up to that. If so, let me know. Uh, that would be cool. That could be a good way of giving you guys more content uh, weekly. So, uh, yeah, that I can manage to do. Um, yeah, you know what? Next, week to next week's topic is going to be around the, record the live recording I did. I'm going to be doing this weekend. Okay? So I'm going to go back and talk to you about that recording. So that's going to be a good topic to cover. All right, guys. So, OK, Luke is saying I have my studio as part of as a part time job. That's so cool. That is pretty cool. Um, making music for my own pleasure. Backspin 66. Cool stuff. Only my own stuff or only for me. That's cool. Yeah, you know, I um, on my side, I'm just going to have a sip of water. On my side, I did produce a lot of albums for indie, indie artists, um, especially here in Quebec, um, working a lot in the Christian francophone scene. So um, I have a lot of clients in France and all of uh, European French countries. Um, so I did a lot of online work with uh, these clients. Uh, did, I did produce up to, I think in the past, for since I started that uh, my studio, I worked on almost like 75, 80 albums, I think, something like that. Um, I have the list somewhere. I'm going to have to look it up. But yeah, um, all sorts of projects, a lot of uh, worship, full band, rock, pop type of thing, uh, some more uh, acoustic jazz stuff, um, you know, but mainly rock and pop, I would say. Um, so. So if you're wondering if I did a lot of gospel music, no, not much, but mainly pop, rock, hard rock stuff, but, you know, worship music and stuff like that. So if you're familiar with this type of music, this is what I did a lot. But I did work on some uh, some electronic projects, uh, jazz. I did jazz recordings, with, with, which was pretty cool. Um, it's, uh, I even worked on the uh, indie Celtic album, which was pretty, pretty cool. That was years ago. I recorded that album. I didn't mix it, but I did the recording in uh, part of the production, which was pretty nice. Um, and I did produce one album of my own because I love writing music, and I do help artists with their uh, with their music as well when it's time to to arrange music and to um, to write parts. You know, some sometimes I end up I'm me and my friend Jimmy. Actually, Jimmy, I'm gonna have you guys. I'm going to present to you my partner, Jimmy, the guy that I worked with on several, several albums. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be part of another live stream, <laughs> Tell, you know, telling you guys about my story and my, uh, the way I enter um, this, um, this type of work on a full-time basis and the stuff I did with my, uh, my work partner, Jimmy. Uh, an amazing guitar player, very good arranger. Uh, we did a lot of mu music arrangement and recordings together. Uh, working with artists, and uh, I'm gonna have him. On, I'm gonna have him on with us sometime, uh, maybe on a live stream or on a video. And um, that guy has some very cool stuff to share uh, that could benefit you guys, especially if you're 
into arrangement and uh, recording your own music. Um, I want to go and maybe look into some more of more into arrangement and songwriting and stuff. So uh, that's why I'm going to have Jimmy on in the near future. So stay tuned on that. Uh, so there you go. So that's basically what I did on my side. So yeah, I did a lot of client work and um, I did a bit of work on my own, released an instrumental album years ago, and I'm working on writing my uh, EP that I'm, I'm supposed to be releasing sometime this year. We'll see. Uh, that's my goal. Anyways, uh, apart from that, I do a lot of stuff with my business. My business has uh, expanded to... Uh, on top of music production, mixing and stuff, I do some video editing, video shooting, some web design. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So I have uh, some people working with me in the business. So it's pretty cool. So it keeps me very, very busy. Um, so, yeah. So I think that's a good idea to release one video a week plus one live stream. I'm good with that. If you guys are good with that, I am. So let's do it. Um, all right, guys. Um, I'm going to answer two last question i'm gonna go with backspin six uh, 66 what is your main instrument drums i am a drummer um yeah so that is my main instrument but i do play guitar a bit um but i keep that part to jimmy jimmy's like way too good uh, but i do play a bit of piano keyboard and stuff uh just enough to uh, to work on my music and on the client's music and i do play a bit of bass um i did record some bass lines on albums uh, but you know, I usually give that to uh, to some better, better, better bass player than myself because I don't consider myself to be a bass player, but I do play a bit of bass. Uh, so yeah, but drums are my main uh, is my main instrument. Um, so there you go. So if you guys have one last question, I'm gonna answer one last question. Maybe I missed a few up here. Let me go check. Okay, Joe, you're doing both, so client work and your own music. Andrew, same for you. That's pretty cool. Nikolai, too, both. Nice. Okay, Joe, you're suggesting that uh, for me to do it Tuesdays. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on on Tuesdays as far as live stream goes. Uh, Joe Gilder has a live stream on Tuesdays and same for Warren. Uh, so I don't want to be in, I don't, I don't know if that's going to be a good day for me. I was more thinking about Monday or Wednesdays, uh, to do a live stream. I don't know if you guys are up with that. Um, hi Chris, uh, next video on vocal mixing, please. I got stuck on it. <laughs> um, okay. What did you, uh, get stuck on? Um, Avi Lang. Cause you know, mixing vocals. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty broad. Uh, if you have something specific you want to ask me, go ahead. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I have like, uh, if, you, if you look on my channel, you click on the playlist section, okay? You, uh, there's this vocal section. There's some stuff I did on, vo on vo mixing vocals on my YouTube channel. Just click on playlist on the video section and look for vocals click there there's a bunch of stuff but i'm for sure going to do some more stuff on uh, mixing vocals uh, as i go into the next recording i'm going to be doing um, so the next few videos are going to be about what i'm going to be doing recording wise with the projects i'm working on um, at this time it's going to be easier for me to produce good content for you guys that can be useful so um guys i'm gonna have to go it was very cool to hang out with you today and again thank you thank you very much uh for being here with me on this live stream you guys are great you guys are awesome uh again please like if you can uh we have 15 watch and just before you go just click on that like uh, button here okay uh, that was gonna help me a lot um just one last time, even if you consider yourself not to be a master, you are a side, uh, as a side going on, do a light of in the dark for us. Cubase guys, yeah, Greg is great. Actually, Greg, like, he's like that Cubase um, Wikipedia type of guy. <laughs> okay, that guy knows everything about Cubase. Um, I know everything about Cubase of stuff I work with in Cubase. So, yeah, but 
but Greg knows like literally everything. Uh, you know, he's a great guy at the same time. I met him twice, one at uh, Winternam and uh, the other time at AES. And uh, there you go, guys. So that's going to be it for today. Again, thank you very much. You guys are great. I'm going to see you next week. Now, next week, I'm probably going to do this next Wednesday, okay? And afterwards, I'm going to start doing it on Mondays, okay? So I, I think Monday is could be a good day because next Monday, I'm going to be recording a live, uh, a live album. So have a nice week and a nice weekend coming up for you and for you guys watching the game go england and uh, have fun all right guys talk to you soon ciao